guys, and today we're talking about the ultimate custom micro drone that you can print for yourself at home. That's right. So many of us that are in the micro brushless craze that is sweeping the community right now, um, especially those of us that have long been in the micro space prior to this explosion in popularity, um, know that the hottest thing is these King Kong 65 millimeter props being pioneered um, and resurrected by Kebab um, FPV. So if you haven't watched his channels on the development that's going on for his custom toothpick frame, go check those out right now. I have two on pre-order and I'm desperately waiting for them to arrive, but I couldn't wait any longer. And when I saw someone had an STL for a print uh, of this frame, I just had to try it out. So this is a custom configuration right here. I am running the Beta 75 Pro 2 stack and VTX that you can see down in there. Um, and I am running the stock canopy holder, not the canopy itself with this is actually the Micro Sparrow 2 by Runcam camera. Um, I was running the Falcor, but I thought this one was a little bit lighter and it actually does a little bit lighter, a little bit better at night. And uh, a lot of times I end up flying these tiny things uh, on the street at night. So I wanted a little bit better light vision. Now the Beta 75 Pro 2 motors are not long enough. So you know if you've been following Kebab's project that he has been creating tiny race wire to extend the wires um, because those don't fit. Now, I didn't want to have to go through that process without having those tiny race wires, but I did discover that the trash can motors do fit. So I'm still working on my review for the trash can. Um, I pre-ordered it from Bangers way, way back when, and then everybody got theirs before I did. So I don't recommend that you pre-order anything from them, guys. Pre-ordering just really means that you're putting yourself last in line to ever get one. People that seem to order after they come in stock, get them first, uh, which is a sad thing, but this thing flies amazing. Now, um, you might expect different levels of performance from a 3D printed thing like this. I actually 3D printed a Floss 3 um, fin that can go mounted on there out of PLA. That did not last at all. You know, I don't recommend that you print a ton of parts out of PLA for your full size quads, but for something small like this, it'll work just fine. I did crack one of these. And the way I cracked it was I was actually trying to adjust a prop on here and I torqued the arm a little bit too hard and cracked it right there. But I put this through about 10 crashes, um, even one that fell from about 15 feet and nothing broke. So really, you're just going to break it in your hands if you do break it. Here's what one looks like coming straight off the printer. I have a Creality uh, CR10. You can find this on Thingiverse. I did have a guy that modified this slightly for the Beta 75 Pro 2. He sent me the file. I'm going to ask him if he wants to upload his version. I believe the one that's on there is just for generic models. So depending on what setup you have, as Bob Rudiger has mentioned in his videos, um, there's a lot of variance between the motor sizes, the stack sizes. So it's tough to get it right depending on what setup you're going to try to go with. Um, this prints very quick in about an hour and a half. So you can have multiple spares. I don't think I'm going to be breaking too many of these. Again, this is just really to tide me over till I get those two picks. I'm going to be switching to that carbon fiber custom frame when it comes. But I wanted to get in the air. Another thing I suggest you print is little tool holders like this. I printed this thing. And also, as these are the ones that Bob Rudigi suggested you get, go get this set of tiny screw hardware. You're gonna want screws in this size. This is a glasses kit. I'll uh, put the link to this in the description below. You're gonna want this to work on this thing. You're gonna want extra hardware. You're gonna wanna save your stock hardware for this. Get longer screws so it can go down. Now, the one area that this is gonna fail is where it screws in, especially on the stack. A few crashes, these things are gonna get loose. Um, so that may be what ends up making you switch it. And when you're working on all these tiny screws, a little thing like this that can hold them. Now this baby little tweezers and this tiny screwdriver comes with this screw set. So that's really nice to have those. And you can actually print a lid for this. So when I'm working on these projects, I have all the screws. If I get interrupted, I can just close the lid, not worrying about these screws and the little gummies that are in there. You don't want to lose those. So keep them in some kind of container when you're working on this. How does it fly? It flies 
<laughs> amazing, stupendous. Um, when I arm this thing, it starts to hover off of the ground before I even apply any throttle. It starts kind of bouncing because there's so much thrust with these. Uh, if you're on 2S, you can fly this very comfortable um, on 1S, but I have enjoyed putting the 300 milliamp in 2S on there. I'm still using the stock um, battery connector that gives you the option to run 1S or 2S. Um, as you can see, it's very tight tolerances with the prop clearance right there, but it does fit just fine. What I've been using to, and I'm gonna probably get some rubber bands or something, but I didn't have any of the right size. I just used a very small size zip tie. Um, looped it through there, right there. I left a little bit on the end. So I'm gonna size it to the size of two little batteries in here, tighten it so that it sits, stays in there just fine. And that will also give you about the same. Two 300s will allow you to also fit a 1450 in there if you wanna run 1S uh, without too much. There's also a little foam that these comes with. So you can kind of apply that in there if you wanna get a little snug fit. They're not gonna fly off too much, but, um, yeah, this is really fun. Like I said, prints out in like an hour and a half. If you have access to a printer, you can definitely try this. Um, not all of the motors are gonna be long enough to, to have wires long enough to fit this, but the trash can ones do. I'm not sure if the Beta 75X 1103s do. I don't think I'm gonna try those on this. I'm gonna wait for the carbon frame, although I do have some. I think this is the max weight that you really wanna load this up for. The nice thing though is you can have plenty of spares on hand if you need. Although, uh, barring a giant like 50 foot fall, I don't think this is gonna crack. And if you fell from that height, you're probably gonna end up messing up something else in this mix anyway. So onto the flight footage, check out how this thing performs. This is very, very fun. Another thing I do suggest is because these are press fit and they have so much power, just make sure and push them back in after every flight or so. I did have an instance where one got a little bit loose and it shot off during flight when I was doing a, a power move. That's where I fell. It wasn't because I just, you know, crashed out of the air, I lost the prop. Um, so double check those and I'll leave the STL down in the, in, the, in the bottom if anybody is also like me impatiently waiting the arrival of their toothpick and just wants to try 65 millimeter on these modern day setups. Definitely recommend this board, although the Crazy Bee I understand is better. So if you have access to the Crazy Bee, I'm not sure if the dimensions are the same, if you may have to modify it to get it to fit on here, but here we go. Thanks guys. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's super.